On today's episode, a new SpaceX competitor glows for the medium lift orbital market. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. 30 years ago, the space industry was essentially static. Access to orbit was controlled by the military, NASA, and a handful of major aerospace corporations who were launching derivatives of missiles designed in the 1950s. There were several reasons for this. The market for orbital launch services was too small to generate multi-billion dollar research and development efforts to produce new, lower cost systems. The high value of the payloads and the need to minimize risk forced the engineering to be conservative. SpaceX disrupted this paradigm with a clever combination of innovation and traditional aerospace technology. In the wake of SpaceX, other firms have recognized a market opening for low-cost launch services that can be developed affordably. One is Kent, Washington-based Stoke Space, founded in 2020 by a team of former SpaceX and Blue Origin employees. Corporate goals are similar to other new space ventures, namely full vehicle reusability and rapid turnaround. The Stoke Space vehicle is called Nova and is expected to have a 5,000 kilogram payload capability to low Earth orbit, with the first stage returning to the launch site. Propulsion is essentially conventional, with seven full-flow staged combustion rocket engines burning methane fuel in the first stage, with a high-performance liquid hydrogen fueled second stage. Several technologies in the vehicle, however, are unconventional. One is the use of a ring of 30 thrusters around the second stage heat shield, maneuvering the spacecraft by differential thrust rather than gimbling the engines. Another is a regeneratively cooled metallic heat shield rather than the current state-of-the-art ceramic thermal tiles. The arrangement of the second stage heat shield and thrusters creates a form of aerospike, optimizing engine performance through a range of density altitudes. Naturally, additive manufacturing is used extensively for engine production and unusually for a startup, the company is developing a vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle refueling capability in orbit for missions to geostationary orbits or translunar injection. Nova will stand 132 feet high, 14 feet in diameter and weigh half a million pounds. Its performance parameters put it squarely in the Falcon 9 range, and it's also comparable to Rocket Lab's Neutron vehicle. Hardware development has progressed to hop tests of scaled-down boosters, and promisingly, the vehicle has been chosen as part of the Space Force Orbital Services Program. The critical question at this point in development of the new space sector isn't whether the technology can be made to work, however, it's about market demand. Will there be enough customers requiring medium lift to low Earth orbit to keep an increasing number of players in the industry in business? Or will the reduced cost of those new technologies create demand where none currently exists? This remains to be seen, but Stoke Space is also teasing an interesting point-to-point -point cargo capability with their propulsively landed second stage. It's possible that the real market growth in new space may not be orbital flight, but in suborbital transportation of military or civilian high-value cargos. The company plans to make an orbital flight by 2025. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.